Hi everyone, this video will be a long overdue update to my vacuum cannon series. Specifically an update to my piston operated design that I introduced in a short series last year. This style of vacuum cannon is my own invention with the key feature being that it does not require an external vacuum pump. A vacuum is created inside the cannon barrel simply by pulling an airtight piston from one end to the other. When the piston is pulled all the way out, the airtight seal is broken, and atmospheric pressure forces air back into the barrel at a velocity several times faster than the speed of sound. The speed of sound is usually the limit for how fast a pressure wave can propagate through a gas like air. But in a vacuum, gas particles can travel as fast as their temperature will allow, much faster than the speed of sound. If there's a solid object still in the barrel when the seal is broken, it's accelerated to impressive speed. All of this is simply caused by the weight of Earth's atmosphere pushing in to fill a vacuum inside a pipe. This new design I've come up with solves a lot of the issues that I've had with my earlier cannons. A cannon that uses an electric vacuum pump takes a long time to reach a deep enough vacuum inside the barrel for it to fire. A piston operated vacuum cannon can fire comparatively quickly, but the trouble is the piston needs to be pulled out of the barrel with all of Earth's atmosphere fighting against it. Pulling the piston isn't really the tricky part though. That only requires about 45 pounds of force for a two inch diameter piston like this one. The hard part is figuring out how to anchor the barrel down so it doesn't move when the piston is pulled out of it. The first cannon I built this way was tethered to a tripod, which used cables and stakes driven into the ground to keep it still. That's a lot of setup if you're just looking to have some fun blasting stuff with a cannon or showing off a scientific concept. So for this design, I wanted something that did not require being held down. To accomplish this, the piston in this design is pulled with a hand crank, and the barrel, which is just a length of PVC straight from the hardware store, is mounted to the same board as the crank. When the piston is pulled through the barrel, the crank wants to move toward it, and the barrel wants to move toward the crank. But they're both attached to the same board, so neither one can move relative to the other. And that solves my problem of having to anchor the cannon down. The only force I have to deal with is what it takes to turn this crank, which is pretty easy to manage. The piston in my earlier designs was attached to the end of a long shaft, which I pulled by hand. Since this new cannon uses a hand crank and rope to pull the piston, I've simply attached a bolt to the back so that I can snap on a clip. This clip is made of steel and it doubles as a tool for pulling the rope back to the front of the barrel after the cannon has been fired. I can use a magnet to drag the steel clip right along through the wall of the pipe until it comes out of the end where the piston can be reattached for the next shot. On the face of the piston, I've attached a strong magnet with epoxy resin so that the projectiles from my cannon can be loaded simply by sticking them to this magnet. In this case, I'm using wooden projectiles, and so I glued a few steel washers to the back so that they would work with this setup. A focus of my earlier vacuum cannon videos was to come up with a method of sealing the front of the cannon that doesn't require aluminum foil burst discs. The front of a vacuum cannon needs to be sealed so that a vacuum can be created inside, but it also needs to allow a projectile to punch through when the cannon fires. Aluminum foil taped over the end of the pipe works well for this, but it takes a lot of time between shots to fold up a piece of foil and tape it to the barrel. I tested a number of different valves as possible replacements for burst discs without success. Mechanical valves just can't open quickly enough and they get destroyed by the projectile. So for this cannon, rather than using valves or homemade burst discs, I put a two inch rubber fitting on the end of the pipe. I then take a disposable plastic cup and push it into the fitting like a cork. 
This gives me a quick way to make a seal on the end of the pipe, and the cup is loosely held enough that when the projectile comes through, it pops out without a problem. So to go over the loading process from start to finish, the rope is first fed through the barrel, the piston is attached and then pushed back into the pipe. A projectile is snapped onto the magnet at the front of the piston, and then a cup is placed into the rubber coupling to make a seal. The cannon is now loaded and ready to fire, quick and easy. A vacuum cannon is not powerful because of the amount of pressure that pushes projectiles down the barrel, which is only about 14 pounds per square inch, but because of the extreme velocity that the air can enter the barrel. Because of this, the best projectiles are lightweight, so that they can accelerate quickly to take advantage of this fast airflow. A vacuum cannon can fire heavy projectiles, like these PVC end caps, but because they accelerate slowly, the speed they achieve is only about on par with a regular air cannon. For supersonic velocities to be possible, the projectile needs to be something like styrofoam or a ping pong ball, very lightweight. And even so, it would require a vacuum cannon much longer than this one to give the projectiles enough time to really hit their maximum speed. Maybe in a future video, I'll join a bunch of pipes together and we'll see what sort of speeds we can achieve. My sponsor for this video is Squarespace, an all-in-one website design and hosting platform. Squarespace is an excellent option if you're looking to set up an online store or a website for your business. They have lots of templates to choose from that look professional right away, and you can easily customize them if you have some unique ideas in mind. In the near future, I intend to open up my own website using Squarespace to sell a few of the inventions I've been working on. Stay tuned for that. That will probably be a project I take on this winter. If you'd like to open your own website or online store, check out squarespace.com and you can start building one right away with their free trial. When you're ready to launch, use my link, squarespace.com forward slash Nighthawk, for 10% off your first website or domain. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I'd love to hear from you in the comments. I still read every one of the comments on my videos, and it's really the only way I know if I'm still doing things you want to see. So leave me comments, leave me likes on my videos if you'd like to, and thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Mose, why do you like the stick more than the watermelon? That doesn't make any sense. Weird bird. <laughs>